Hi friends, I'm Holly and this is my floss tube, Hobbies of Holly. I'm so glad you joined me today. First, I want to say thank you to those who have subscribed and liked and commented um, and for coming back. That means the world to me. I did not realize how much I would enjoy the interaction in the comments, so thank you. And if you're new, this is a floss tube um, about cross stitch, sometimes quilting and sometimes other crafting that I do. So welcome. I'm back. I will probably not be one of those people who can tell you I'll be back every two weeks or anything like that because my life is very fluid. In fact, Graham's been in the hospital again this week. On Monday night, um, he cried all night long. And Graham is a child who doesn't cry much. He has a very high pain tolerance and he's non-speaking. So you don't know what's wrong when he's upset. And um, my daughter called me at 4 a.m. and said, Mom, I think, I think we gotta go to the ER. So anyways, we went to the ER. Long story short, he got admitted for a few days, got discharged yesterday. So on my days that I have a day at home, those are days I think, oh, I'll film a floss tube. So unpredictable, maybe my life will get predictable, but probably not. So anyways, he's back home. Um, he's recovering again. Um, he had a very bad ear infection. He um, had some bowel issues. And then we found out yesterday he had strep as well as his mommy. So, and he, as I've said, he's a medically complicated kid. So he's that all like really messes with his vitals and um, fluid status and all of that. So he was on um, on the radar of the ICU. They would come and check on him, but he was fine. He didn't need it. And he's doing so much better. In fact, he um, is just making some good physical progress and recovery this morning when we FaceTime. So anyways, thank you again for all of your sweet things you say about Graham and those who say that you know, you're thinking of him and praying for him. So let's talk about floss tube, mm, cross stitch. Do you want to? I brought another really old whip that I thought you might get a kick out of. I found this in our storage room a while back and it's been in my stitchy space. Hello, 1980s. <laughs> I stitched this, who knows where I got the chart. Oh, the back, man, look what a carrier I was. Not pretty, but I stitched this and you know, the 80s, we hung, the, we um, finished things in hoops with our eyelet lace. But I think this was fabric from that matched our bedroom, maybe a few years into our marriage. So it's probably 38, 40 years old, but it's still here and it makes me smile. Something else from the past I wanna show you that's not a finish, but you know, I love Holly Hobby and my sweet friends, let's see. I think this one is from Tam. She got me for Christmas, sorry about the glare, but a vintage Holly Hobby sewing machine. And this one is from Missy, Two Needles Pulling Thread, that came in a gift exchange that we did. Aren't they cute? So those are part of my Holly Hobby display. If you ever hear that sound, that's my dog Baxter. He's got long nails that are all clickety clackety on the hardwood floor. And then the last previous finish I'd like to show you is this. This is um, a kit by Roveris that I got at StitchCon maybe two years ago. But it's a wooden box that the top is painted and this lid comes off. And then the kit had the pattern and um, the banding and the floss. Isn't that cute? I love it. I like bees. I've always liked bees. In fact, when we got married, my kitchen was decorated in bees because, you know, back then you had to have a theme for things. Um, Tam had um, sheep, lambs, because her maiden name was Lamb. Um, and I liked cows for a while, but I've always liked bees. Okay, those are previous finishes. Now what do you want to talk about? Let's talk about things I started this week. When I last saw you, I was itching to start some of the kits that I had purchased. And so I started three things since I last saw you. I haven't gotten much done on them, but I started. Oh, let me show you this. Have you watched um, Stephanie the New England Stitcher? She makes what she calls, I think her husband started calling them the whipper keepers. And she custom made this one for me. Um, this one's a full size. And I'm sorry, mine's messy because I have stuff in it. But she makes a really nice bag. And she makes some wooden 
items as well. So this is her tag that her zipper pulls that say the New England Stitcher. She puts a little hook that you can put your floss. This is her card. And I don't love vinyl, so she did mine in all fabric. So it's got pockets and the zipper pocket. Isn't it fun? Okay, so what's in it? Um, I had asked what you thought I should start, and a couple people suggest I go ahead and start Roses for Ruby because I have a granddaughter named Ruby. And it's really not that big, and so I decided to start it. And this is how much I have on my start. Not a lot, but some. And the kit came with the Belle silk. So, and that's the first time I've used it. And so I am very much enjoying that. Um, it's my first time using an over dyed silk, right? Because I see some variegation in this, don't you? Can you see that in the green? So that is fun. And I'm one who gets a little bored with just borders and starts working on the innards, but I think this one, the border will keep me going. And it's not, but since it's not huge, I think I'll try to see if I can get the border to meet all the way. So that's one thing I started. Here's another thing I started. Now don't laugh at my small start, but I had to rip it out and restart my start. This is a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. And I will probably forever accidentally call it the peacorn because that's what Caroline from Evertotes has accidentally called it. But this is by the Scarlet How. I'm sorry, the Scarlet Letter. I don't know why I love this so much, but I really do. Do you see it? And do you see some of this? I get very excited when I see any other floss tuber or person on Instagram stitching it because it makes me want to get it out and stitch on it. Um, Jenny from the Bougie Stitchers is going to start hers for Mother's Day, I think she said, because it was a gift from her family. Um, I think Contented Needleworker Ken has it as a whip. And I know Sue from Floss Toss Knit24 is working on it. And Sue says it's like coloring and it's very satisfying. So one of my big decisions is this is full coverage. And I didn't really care about stitching the background color. So when the floss came, I decided to pull a linen that maybe was a similar color to the background so I didn't have to stitch that. And what I found is this from Cedar River Linen. Um, Arboreal, I think maybe is what it's called. Okay, that's my measly start on it. But I think it'll be really cool to use this as the background and then not stitch that green background. Here's my mistake, learn from me. Here's my first start on it that I did not rip out. Oh, wait, it's the back. Here's my first start. So I got all this stitched and then realized when I put it away, you know what? I should check the measurements. And this, the way I stitched it, this was not wide enough. So I restarted it and it's gonna go this direction instead. I guess thankfully I didn't cut the linen. I'm not one who cuts the linen until I feel really good about at least part of the border is done or the whole length or width of it. And then I feel safe to cut it because, you know, measure twice, cut once, but I've made mistakes before. So I just like the security of getting a few stitches in. Um, this is the floss. Oh, it's messy in my bag. It's just been tangly in there, but how about those colors? I feel like it's a, when my daughters were little and they need their hair combed when my floss comes out of the bag like that. But this is just all the DMC floss and it is in one of my Berry from Stitch Folk project bags. I think this is the most recent kit or subscription box bag that um, Barry sent. Okay, my third start, Contented Needleworker Kim is so sweet and supportive and she commented after my last floss tube that she also has Hannah Elliott which I have gotten as a kit and wanted to start it and so we messaged back and forth and we decided maybe we would get a small start on it see how it went do you know she already has like the house done she's very fast that Kim I wanted to start just so I could start it and I had this teeny tiny bird finished this is on Legacy Lennon Corn Tassel. I think that's a 37 count. Okay, just to show you that I really don't like to cut my fabric. 
not so much fabric I'm stitching it on. I know it's ridiculous, but once I get a little further, I'll cut it. But until then, it's staying. I have this one in a um, Debbie stitching. I always forget her Instagram the way that Debbie's and stitching is, but in one of my um, portfolios from her, and I'm using the 103 silks, and I have them in the spool pods, which is my favorite way to store them. So that is in this bag, and I showed you the chart. Yes, I did, yes. So those were my three starts, actually out of four. I'll show you that too. Um, my fourth start. Who even am I with all these starts? I had talked about many mansions, my last floss tube, and I know I had mentioned that my mother-in-law had passed away, and we have not yet had her funeral or waiting until one of um, my husband's sisters was back from a long trip. So it's going to be next weekend. But in her um, funeral planning wishes, the John 14 verse about um, where I go, there'll be many mansions is in it. And so I thought this would be a really nice um, thing to start in honor of Steve's mom. And I have not told him yet that I'm doing it, but um, it is really fun to stitch. I'm having a hard time not monogamously stitching on it. I did my own floss conversion and I converted it to silks, just NPIs that I had in my stash. And I really like them, but let me show you. I'm doing it on 46 count Dolly Madison by Needle and Flax. And this is what I've got stitched on it. This was um, enjoyable. I had to do some restitching on it, but I love stitching houses. And so I just zoomed through these columns and started on um, the house last night. I also started on the grass. We're watching the Ben Franklin series on Apple. And so I was stitching while we were watching and it was great fill-in, but then I remembered I've got a retreat in two weekends and this would be great fill-in for retreat stitching. I'm going to the um, Nicola Parkman retreat from Queen City Samplers that's in Cincinnati. And so I think I'll continue getting some outline in so that I can take this as fill-in. But it's hard to put it down, it really is. Okay, speaking of Queen City Sampler Guild, there was a class, an online Zoom class this week um, with Kathleen Littleton. I was very excited about it. I bought the kit. I showed you the kit. Graham's been in the hospital. A couple days he was not so, he, would, he just had a rough few days. And I didn't even look at my planner. And Thursday night I got home and I looked at my planner and I was like, I missed the Zoom the night before. I was home. I totally could have done it, but I totally forgot. So this is the um, kit that came in it. Did any of you attend that? If you did, I would love to know what I missed. I reached out to um, the person in the guild who had sent the information. She said it was not recorded, but a lot of the information is in this book. But if you went, will you tell me what I missed? Oh, I was so disappointed with myself, but... It's how it rolls. Okay, my last whip, where did this come from? Oh, my um, my mini mansions is in, no, this is the berry, the Stitch Folk bag that was in the um, subscription box. I must have gotten the other berry bag from one of her sales she had. This was the berry bag that was in, that's so cute. That was from her subscription box. Okay, my last whip I will show you is the Book God Sal that we're working on together. This is how far I've stitched. The last couple of nights I got the flat, I, I keep calling it a tree, but it's not. It's the um, sunflower stalk um, and leaves. Let me show you the chart. This is by, um, by the Bay Needle Art. And this is the chart. And many of you and my friends are stitching, but God, and I'm doing it in honor of Graham um, and some of the things that he's gone through in the last two months, uh, but it's really fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. I've, um, I don't quite have half of it stitched because I have not yet done the words or these flowers, but I do have most of the first half stitched. Um, so I'm enjoying that. I'll show you again. This is on Boston Tea Party 40 count from Legacy Fiber Arts, which is also LFA linens. I 
I'm using some of the called for, but I also pulled some things from Stash if I didn't have called for, and there were a couple colors that I liked better than other colors, and so this is what I'm doing. If you wanna know any of the colors I'm using, just let me know, and I'll tell you. And that is in my Como Stitches bag. Jess is so sweet. She and I messaged a little bit this week. Okay, there's that. One other whip I was going to tell you about. I don't know if you're like me, but I have too many whips. And I occasionally go through them. And sometimes I find I've lost interest. And this was one that even during the stitch, I lost interest. And I think partly because I stitched it on 32 count, which was what was called for in the chart. And I'm just... I now prefer one strand over two, and this was two strands, and it was just frustrating to me. And this is the Sunny Side Sampler by The Drawn Thread. And so this is how much I stitched on it, and it's cute, but I just decided I just didn't wanna finish it. And so I cut it down, called it quits, and I'm gonna finish this into a pillow. And I'm really happy with it. Like, I, this is this is good enough, and I'm happy. So just in case that you ever need encouragement that you're not loving a whip, you like part of it, just see what you can use and go from there. One of the other projects that I would like to start, I wanted to make some bags and that is going to take some more time at home and some like focused time at home. But one thing, I don't think I told you this last time, I really want to do this by Annie everything bag. Um, it is a great project bag and there's a strap that goes in the middle that you can add or take away project sleeves. And so I really want to work on this. I would probably not do these small compartments. I would probably do them all, um, you know, kind of traditional project size so I can put a whole chart linen, you know, the project and the floss in, but this is one of the things I want to sew. And I still am trying to get time to work on and make the work cushion by Cottage Garden Threads. This was available, I got mine from Top Knot. Top Knot. This was a market release that they had. And I had asked and Top Knot is out of them, but she does have some more coming. She just didn't know how long it would be. So I want the center of this can be a piece that you've stitched and it needs to be 10 by 10, I think. So I went through my um, completed stitches that are unfinished and pulled out a couple of contenders. I cannot think of what the name of this chart is, but it is, um, you know, I see your Beth Twist heart ah, samplery. I'm gonna have to find it. Anyways, this was a stitch that a group of friends did and we pass it along. We stitched a hand and pass it on to the next person and they stitched their hand so their initials are in it. And I thought this would, heartstring samplery, it came to me. That's what it is. And so I thought this could be a really fun center of that lap pillow. And the purpose of this work cushion is it has pockets. You can see that the cottage garden thread um, is sticking in those pockets. And I think these yellow corners are pockets that you can stick your scissors in, but it's a lap pillow that you can work with. So your stitching would sit on it and that's where you would stitch and it would hold your scissors, etc. And I love it. And it's also adjustable. So if you adjust the strap, it can be taller or if you adjust it, it can be shorter. And it requires a few different strips of fabric. And so I also ordered fabric. I really like French General fabric and Happy Little Stitch Shop had some of the French general fabric left. And so this is the fabric that I ordered to make my work cushion. Now, would you use the hands, the heartstring sampler finish, or would you use my modern folk embroidery um, holiday sal? I don't know, I think either could work. Um, this one's a little bit smaller, so I would have to add probably some more strips to the side, which is totally fine. I can figure that out. But, okay, this one, do you vote for the um, Modern Folk Embroidery or the Heartstrings Samplery? It's going to be hard not to make two, isn't it? Okay, you vote, and I will take that into consideration. Haul. 
I think I'll call it purchases. That sounds prettier than haul, don't you think? So last time I told you that um, Treehouse Fiber Arts, Rachel, was going to be receiving some Legacy Fiber Arts linen or LFA linen. She got it last weekend. Mine arrived yesterday and I stocked up. I'll show you some of it. She sold out, but Sue will be dying more. So keep an eye on Rachel's um, website, but she has a newsletter. And as soon as she receives it and it's ready to sell, she sends out her newsletter. That's how we found out about it last weekend. So this is Low Tide, which is one of my very favorite um, linens. I got that in 36, I got it in 40. I also love Covered Bridge that Sue does. I don't know if it's showing up very well, but maybe. I got that in 36 and 40. And then I'm normally a warm beige type of linen um, stitcher. That's my preference. But I, I wanted to try the Nor'easter, which is more of a gray, bluish gray. I got that in 40 counts. Um, I even got some low tide Ada. This is 20 count Ada. And it's so interesting when you have the same, the low tide in 36, 40, and Ada. I know that the, in the bag, so I don't know if you can see. These are all low tide but you can see how different either the Ada versus the linen takes color or the 40 versus the 36 count takes the color. That's some haul. Um, also, I have some more haul. Purchases, new purchases. I ordered from Hobby House. And the Florence Mary Dickinson, is it Dickinson? Yes, by Hands Across the Sea. This was an exclusive they did. And I think we thought it was gone. Maybe Brenda and Laura talked about it. And Hobby House posted that they had a few more. I'm not sure if they still do or not, but aren't those colors fun? So I got that from Hobby House. Florence Mary Dick Dickerson, nope, Dickinson. Um, this is also from Hobby House. This was from the Homespun Needlework Home um, Facebook group when they do exclusives with different shops and with different designers. This is from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And I bought the um, chart for the original sampler, which is this. Um, Mary Jewett, 1853 sampler. But what they did for the... Um, exclusive is um, Wendy took a portion of it and made um, stitchable pillows out of it. And so these are the designs that you could get. And it came with the floss and the linen. And the linen is called Sweet Home. Um, and it's a seraphim and minus 40 count. Those came. I told you last time that I couldn't find Maggie May. I found um, when I placed my Happy Little Stitch Shop order for the French General Fabric, I thought, oh, she carries cross-stitch. Let me see if Angela has it. And she did. So if you're looking for it, um, Happy Little Stitch Shop has it. But I also think maybe a lot of the designers have released their PDFs from market now. So Stacey, Stacey Nash probably has this as a PDF. Isn't she cute? Um, Barry from Stitch Folk stitched the little shoes red. And I might have to copy her on that because I think I had little red shoes when I was little. Um, from the Facebook D-Stash group, Stash Unload is what it's called. A few people had asked me um, where I find D-Stash um, items. And Stash Unload is on Facebook is where I find them. You have to be fast because people claim things very quickly. Um, two other sources that I've gotten are some de-stashes on Etsy. The Calculated Stitcher does some de-stashing. And I've gotten two huge amounts of quilting fabrics and supplies and cross-stitch from some estate type situations where um, a stitcher or a quilter has passed away and their family is um, selling some of their um, stash. So that's where I've gotten things in case you were looking 
But one thing I purchased was this Lottie Daw Mary Ann England. I love um, one color samplers. I love black samplers a lot. I don't know if you can see my black sampler on the wall on my fireplace back there. But I would love to stitch this. It takes a lot of the decision out and you're just constantly keeping you know, the same color thread loaded on your needle. I bought some Legacy Linen on the um, Stash Unload because it's one of my favorites. This is Corn Tassel. I might have told you wrong. Uh, I did tell you wrong. On whatever that star is that was on Legacy, Hannah Elliott, that is not Corn Tassel. That is Chai Tea. Something Chai Tea. If you want to know, just tell me. Then, someone on the D Stash um, had a couple of kits. This is A Little Bit of Spring by Blackbird. And I think this is from the Dying to Stitch Club last year. And so she was de-stashing the chart, the fabric and the floss. And so I purchased that from her. And when I messaged her to give her my payment, she um, said that she might have some other things that she was listing soon. And I said, well, you know, feel free to let me know. And so another thing that she told me that she was selling was the Scarlet House Autumn Garden. And I don't have a lot of autumn smalls, and I really like that. Um, and so again, it's a full kit. It has backing fabric. It even has the trim for the pillow. And I believe this was from um, some sort of club. I, this one doesn't have more information, so I don't know. Then she said, I don't know if you're interested, but I also have a couple of Blackbird um, out of print book charts. And I said, okay, tell me. I find I do my, maybe I stress shop when Graham's in the hospital because these were things I bought in the hospital and they already arrived, but she was in Kentucky and I'm in Ohio. So that was fast. I was very excited when my mail came yesterday. So I splurged, but it was like a consolation prize because I'm not at the library stitchers retreat right now. And all my, well, many of my friends are. Um, so I splurged. I bought the Joy Noel Blackbird book. It's beautiful. I think this is really pretty. And I didn't realize it, it's a book that has other really pretty things to stitch in it. I'd flash it, but I know I'd flash you the chart, so I won't. But oh, wait, let me show you this. Isn't that pretty? I love the simplicity of that. So I bought that from her. And um, Bountiful Harvest. Um, it's one of the Loose Feathers Abyssidarian series by Blackbird. I will tell you that if I was just scrolling through the D stash and saw that listed with the price, I would have kept scrolling. But I don't know, I was talking to her. She was very nice. She was trying to pay some bills. And I was like, okay. So I bought it. I'm excited to stitch those. I should probably start those since I splurged, right? Um, one of the other things I received, and I I will show you because I'm going to guess other people have already received theirs. Mine had a little hiccup with it that I guess I hadn't specified um, a fabric count. But my Hobby Lobby mystery box, Hobby Lobby, no, Hobby House mystery box arrived yesterday. Again, the mail yesterday was so fun. This was something, I think most people got theirs in March. Um, but again, mine was a little bit delayed. So if you want to see what's in it. There's a cork notebook and a cork covered pen. Isn't that fun? It's just a nice, it's nice paper. I love a good paper notebook. This is the chart that came in it. And it says it's by Hob Hobby House Press. Um, maybe I wasn't aware that they designed, maybe it's something new, but it's cute, isn't it? These matching note cards came in it. Aren't those pretty? I would send those to a stitcher or a non-stitcher. Some um, Saju 28 count needles, not count, number 28 needles. Um, a really pretty little needle minder, wooden needle minder. Um, a Hobby House floss drop, wooden floss drop. The limited edition um, Weeks parchment linen for that chart and bee bar lotion. I'm kind of picky about lotion. I'm sorry about that lighting, but this is nice. 
I've already used some. It's hard to use it for me when it's really pretty and I'm gonna mess it up, but I use some, oh, it smells good. And it's, it's really nice. It's not too heavy, but yet it's enough to kind of coat your hands. So I liked those a lot. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. I think that kind of covers it. Um, I was telling you about like a filming schedule that I, I won't have one. One thing I don't think I've shared with you, um, in 2015, my youngest daughter, Julia, um, she got married in June and six weeks later was diagnosed with leukemia. And it was a childhood leukemia, so it was pretty unusual to be diagnosed at 21 with it, but it's called acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And it's a two and a half year treatment. And so we were obviously pretty devastated when um, she was diagnosed. And I am a firstborn type A, Enneagram one planner kind of girl. And so I had, you know, my whole fall planned out and I literally had to just close my planner, order a new calendar and start all over because our life was then rotating and revolving around hospital stays, hospital admissions for her treatment in the different phases and uh, blood transfusions and clinic appointments and chemo. She's doing very well now. Are there any other cancer moms out there? Um, I feel like we cancer moms have a lot in common and connect on a, on a different level. Anyway, I, all that to say that um, this very scheduled, planned Holly had to learn to be fluid and fly by the seat of her pants. And then the pandemic happened and then Graham was born. And so I'm still flying by the seat of my pants and I learned it's not so bad. I like a plan, but it's good to learn to be flexible too. So anyways, I'll film again when I have a day at home or have enough to show you. But until then, um, life is fragile. Every day's a gift. Go love well. Happy stitching. One more thing or two or three. I forgot to pull a winner from last week's giveaway, which was the Clara Hansen, oh, I'm sorry with a glare, by Hello from Liz Matthews. The keyword was hello, and the winner is Trisha999. So Trisha, please contact me. My email will be below, and I'll get this mail to you. I would like to give something this week because I found another duplicate. Please be over 18, please be in the U.S., and please don't use any of the words that would indicate um, spammers to come. I really like Mojo Stitches, and this is the Humble Sampler, and I bought it twice. I have it all kitted up, and I'd like to stitch it, but I haven't started it. So please use the word Humble in a comment, and I will draw the next time I film. And then two more things about great deals. Cousin Christy texted me yesterday. Is that the right word? Text, sent me a text yesterday to say that Stitching Lane had 50% off this weekend. And the um, promo is Spring 50. And I found some things, including I found the new Blackbird release. Um, I think they might be gone, but you might find some things. Also, I watched Whips and Kits because Heidi is fantastic. And she talked about Kitten Stitcher having a $5 section. Did not know that, went right there, and I've now placed two orders and will probably place a third. Um, the, some of the things that Heidi found are no longer available. I purchased things yesterday, went on it today before I told you about it, and there's some things that weren't on there yesterday. So maybe she adds to it, but there's yardage, there's cross-stitch, um, charts, some exclusives that she's offered before. So go shop.